keep up to date with our latest videos, please hit the subscribe button below. Hi there, welcome to this video from racingbetdata.com. Today we're looking at back delay in relation to pace ratings from our website. So this is a similar video to the later back that we, uh, we did a few weeks back. Um, and again, looking at the pace rating and how that can be used. This has come about from a, uh, a member that's emailed us and requested this. Uh, and I'm going to just talk you through how the data can be used um, and show you the, the output and how that can be taken to the next level. So in this summary sheet, we have uh, back to lay ticks set as a tick offset of 12, which basically means 12 ticks lower than the entry point, which is your back bet. So the lay is going to be 12 ticks lower and an assumed stop loss of 12 ticks as well. Now, the thing to be careful with with any trading uh, specifically in play is that your stop loss might not always get matched. If, for instance, we have a, a back to lay that we're showing you here, we back a horse and we have a stop loss of 12 ticks, but that horse is running over jumps, hits the hits the fence of, or falls or unseats the rider, it's likely that your stop loss will be breached um, and will, will not be matched at all. So you lose your full liability there. It's possible. Uh, so that's always something to consider. We, for our selection criteria, we're using a starting price between two and 50, uh, which is the same as we did for the later back video and uh, a flat stake of 50 pounds per horse where the race has at least seven runners and the horse's pace rating is at eight or above. Okay, so when we did later back, we were looking for slow horses. When we're doing back to lay, we're looking for the opposite. We're looking for horses that are gonna start quickly, potentially front runners in the race. So I've gathered together three days worth of um, data from the results um, archive on the website. So any advanced member can go in and download previous day's files and I've pasted those straight into the data tab, as you can see here. So all of this data is pasted. I've hidden a few of the columns. These are the recorded price movements, uh, pre-race, and from here, in play. Okay, so we're only looking at in play. And then what I've done to the right-hand side, which is very similar to the later back video, is we have some calculations way over to the right hand side just to allow enough space for all the in-play um, price movements. Um, we've specified the runners in the race, the pace rating of the horse, so we've dragged all of this from um, cells and columns to the to the left hand side. So things of interest that we've added in are the tick drop and the tick increase, so this records um, how many ticks in running that this horse dropped, dropped by compared to this uh, starting price and how many ticks it increased by as a maximum uh, compared to its starting price. So in this instance you can see this horse actually went on to win because its uh, minimum traded price was 101 which is where the 241 tick drop comes in. Now this wasn't actually a horse that met our criteria so we'll look at two that, um, that did and one that won and one that was a losing trade. Okay, so we'll highlight those two here. So we had a win and lose. Okay, so looking at uh, Agent Shiftwell, the Betfair SP was 8.67, which is where we would have placed our initial back bet. And we were looking to lay um, at a profit using our tick offset at 6.2. So that's automatically calculated at 12 ticks lower. And our red out, our um, stop loss would have been set at 12.5, which is 12 ticks higher. Okay, there's the stake. And then what we've done cleverly in here is find within that horse's traded um, in play range. And I'll just scroll to the left to show you. So we have the first traded price here, which was 8.8. .8. What we do is we look to see whether it's traded to the um, tick offset before the stop loss, okay? And this is very similar, but it's the inverse of the later back video that we showed you. And you can see in this instance for this horse, Agent Shiftwell, 
that it hit the tick offset before it hit the stop loss. So it did reach both of those odd, ra odd ranges, but it hit the tick offset, which is highlighted by the higher number in here before it hit the tick off uh, the stop loss. Okay, so that number is indicating columns to the right from the last traded price. Okay, and that records as a win, and then that is calculated accordingly, um, which is the uh, calculation that you can get from the green up calculator which is free to download from from the website it also shows you the exposure that you're putting on that so although you're putting a 50 pound stake we're assuming that you have that um, stop loss applied so you're only ever risking the the value in this column here okay and then we have some further detail on the horse uh, the date and distance that it ran at Looking at the one below, Spring Bloom. So this one uh, went off with an SP of 3.25. And we were looking to get a profit when it hit 2.86 and take an exit where it hit 3.85. And as you can see here, the tick offset, it didn't actually drop down to 2.86. And that's justified here with the minimum. So it actually didn't trade below its starting uh, price. So we would have taken a red on that one. Um, and that's calculated here with the loss and shown here in the profit and loss column. Okay, so I'm just going to return those to the normal color and return to the summary tab. So as you can see, we have some summary detail here. So we have the three days of data that I've put in here and the overall profit and loss, the overall selections and our total exposure, assuming that the stop loss is matched. And I've also put a table in here to show by distance, although that needs to be sorted um, just in order of distance the way excel works it doesn't always understand what you're trying to look at in terms of horse racing data so i'm just going to pop that one in there that one in there and then put the three mile above there so we can see at a glance how certain distances have performed and the summary table so these two should be aligned unless we're filtering out certain race distances uh, so the overall profit loss for a £50 stake, assuming the stop loss is matched on each horse for those three days, would have been £177. Our actual liability, which is again, assuming the stop losses match, would have been £2,022. Our overall liability that we would have needed to put into the market, so it's basically uh, the total stake times the number of horses, was £6,500, which gives an... Uh, ROI or a yield of 8.79%. Now what I'm also going to do is just add in a couple of extra days data to this and show you how, how that can be done. Now you need to bear in mind that earlier in the year we did add some additional columns to our data range. Um, they're not ones that affect the analysis in this file but it does mean that everything shifted to the right. Um, so if you're using files from uh, earlier in the year or last year you will need to make sure that the headers are aligned to the headers in this spreadsheet or the one that you're using or you've created yourself. So I'm just gonna download a couple of uh, additional days worth of data. So we're gonna put in the 25th. So simply select all those uh, columns in there, uh, rows in there, sorry, and paste. And I'm gonna do the same for the 24th of April, so I've downloaded these, select all those rows, add in, and we just need to make sure that we drag this formula all the way down, so it calculates for these additional days. That'll do it. And then we can go to the summary and update the returns. And you can see we had two more winning days, um, actually increased winning days for the 24th, 25th um, of April, which would have brought the yield up to 13.13. Now, what we could say is, well, how much of an impact is the pace having on those selections? Is that just a general trend? Um, if we put in a pace rating, say a minimum of one, and update the returns, you could see that that would have generated an overall loss. 
so given an early indication of how important the a factor the pace is to selecting uh, horses back to lay again with a pace rating of two um, it would have shown an overall loss as well um, we'll put that back to eight and update and I'm just going to keep going until we find a losing day because I'm sure they do happen um, let's download the 23rd the 23rd of April data paste that in and then we can go over to the right hand side and drag the data down for the 23rd let's just keep an eye on the profit and loss column so refresh that so so for the 23rd of April we did actually have a losing day an overall losing day of uh, 10 pounds okay which brings the yield slightly down so that's quite um, that's going to jump around quite a lot the yield we've only got a small sample of a day's worth of data but hopefully you can see um, how the data can be used how uh, the pace rating can be used as a factor for either laying to back or backing to lay and then we can start looking into distances and other criteria that may impact on your your selections now as i've generated this file for one of our members um, it did take a few hours which was chargeable so we're not going to release this file free of charge um, but if you did want to to get a copy of it you can contact us and we would uh, we would charge at the same price hope you found the video interesting and we will see you soon